So that with the holy month of Rajab, inshaAllah, starting, and Subhana man huwa khalaqun nur, that Allah is going to dress us from these divine delights that Allah wants to bestow upon the heart of the believers. And an abdukul ajisa da'ifu miskeen as alim, but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Abi dhulbi madadakum an azadakum Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, Ya Habib al Azeem. InshaAllah, Hal Shahir we can read from Surah Al Munafiq the first five verses that for Rajab, again always the people of tafakkur that Allah knows what He's going to reveal as far as marifa and this journey into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad started at the first lunar month through Surah Tawbah, then Surah Al-Kahf to be from the Ashab Al-Kahf, people of the cave, the cave of the Divinely Presence, the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah says, I can't be found on heaven or on earth but on the heart of my believer, the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and then all the, the light from Surat Al-Kahf into the kingdom through the 27th surah that Allah wants us to understand that what I bestow upon the kings of creation, things that can't be even imagined. And then to the divinely lights of Surat Al-Yaseen and all that Allah testifies, Yaseen wal Qur'an al-Hakim, the testifying by the name of Sayyidina Muhammad and the realities of Ya and Seen and that every wisdom is now emanating in this cave that you're entering and this, this Divinely lights and presence that you are moving to. And then we went to Surat Al-Qamar, then the, the 45th Surah Jalsiya, the 54th Surah Qamar and the reflection of the Divinely Presence that those entering the cave, being dressed by the cave that they're going to be reflected upon by these Divinely lights. And then we arrive at the seventh lunar month, the immense power of seven, the reality of Rajab, all the blessings that are coming in Rajab. And then what Allah gives to us of that surah, the 63rd surah would be Munafiqeen and Surat al-Munafiq and the immensity of what Allah draws our attention in this way of marifa, because as we are being dressed in these lights they remind for us, don't think Allah once He bestows these favours upon the servant the shaitan is not leaving them alone. That, okay you got then that's congratulation and that's good for you or shaitan is, no I'm coming after you. Any sign of light on you, any sign of blessing upon you. I'm coming after you until Allah names you to be a mukhlis where you should be safeguarded and mafuz. at least he'll be attacking and Allah will be guarding and, and cleaning the servant. So Surat al-Munafiq then is then drawing to us an attention of the danger that you face. Your danger is not from unbelievers. Your, your concern is not the Christians and Jews, oh my God they're going to make problems for us. No, no, they have nothing to do with you. To them their religion, to you your religion. Allah didn't draw His attention that that's a danger for you in this spiritual path. What's a danger for you is the one whom you think they are Muslim, you think they believe and Allah then begins to describe, inshaAllah we'll recite the five verses at the beginning of Surat Al-Munafiq inshaAllah, Aj Shahid. Look at 
يحسبون كل صيحة عليهم هم العدو فاحذرهم قاتلهم الله ولا يؤفكون فإذا قيل لهم تعالوا يستغفر لكم رسول الله لبوا رؤوسهم ورأيتهم يسدون وهم مستكبرون صدق الله العلي العظيم Allah of the Rasul Kareem, Habib Al-Azim Shalla Yahya, you can recite the, the English nice and, and, and slow, not fast, inshaAllah. When the hypocrites come to you, Ya Rasulullah, they say, You bear witness that you are certainly the Messenger of Allah. And surely Allah knows that you are his messenger, but Allah bears witness that the hypocrites are truly liars. They have made their false oaths as a shield, hindering others from the way of Allah. Evil indeed is what they do. This is because they believed and then abandoned faith. Therefore their hearts have been sealed, so they do not comprehend. When you see them, their appearance impresses you. And when they speak, you listen to their impressive speech. But they are just like worthless planks of wood leaning against the wall. They think every cry is against them. They are the enemy, so beware of them. May Allah condemn them. How can they be deluded from the truth? When it is said to them, Come, the Messenger of Allah will pray for you to be forgiven, they turn their heads in disgust, and you see them, Ya Rasulullah, turn away in arrogance. It is the same whether you pray for their forgiveness or not. Allah will not forgive them. Surely Allah does not guide the rebellious people. They are the ones who say to one another, Do not spend anything in those on those immigrants with the Messenger of Allah so that they will break away from him. And to Allah alone belong the treasures of the heavens and the earth if the hypocrites do not comprehend. It draws our attention to just because somebody is giving the shahada, they're praying and have all the outwardly appearance the qiraat is impressive, they speak in a way that they have studied many hadiths, memorized much of the Qur'an and Allah is then drawing the believer, be very careful. Not only they're dangerous but Allah is very angered by them and the curse of Allah is upon them. And for us not to live a life of judgment, to look for somebody to judge but to give us an understanding and that's where we stopped at the fifth ayatul kareem. And when it is said to these people, their madhab, their belief and whoever they are and everyone has to identify themselves as, am I like this? And do I know somebody like this? Or will I come across somebody like this? Then in this way of marifa, safeguard your heart. Because Allah not the shaykh, not anybody else is saying but Allah gives all the first description of hypocrisy and using the religion as a means to distract and to move people away from the deen. And they come in many forms into the religion. They're, they're coming from other faiths, hiding themselves, pretending to be Muslim, pretending to put uh, doctrines and belief and extremist un ideology that have nothing to do with Islam and infiltrate it, place it, put it and whatever the different characteristics that Allah describing how, how upset He is by who they are, what they represent, then comes to and when it's said to them that, come so that we can verify who you are. Come to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and ask istighfar. Whether alive or spiritual to the holy Rosa Sharif in the presence of Medina to Munawwara, Allah has come to Prophet Remember we, we talk from the time reality and timeless reality. No mind people, 
they think everything just dunya. This is regarding when Prophet was alive. Allah gave a Qur'an for 63 years of life, that was it. Or this Qur'an was a story from beginning of time to the end of time and for all time because Allah has no time. So the reality that Allah won't I have no time. When I'm speaking, I'm speaking from an ancient reality of souls, from galaxies and planets and universes we have no understanding because Allah created you and I created that which you don't know. All of them are under my Qur'an, all of them under Rasulullah rahmatan lil alameen. Every creation is under the authority of Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah is saying, then verify them. Say, come, come and, and ask for Prophet's istighfar and forgiveness. And what they say, and they avert their faces, and you see them angered and disdained. Like, what are you talking about? It's shirk. This is not allowed. This is just, what, what, what? The whole being becomes angered. And anybody who's been for Umrah and Hajj, that's all you see there. That you know, they just want the abode of bad manners, bad character, anything they can get you to do sort of of a bad manner in Medina, they try so hard. Do like this, put your back like this, don't put your hand like this. So Allah is saying, go to Prophet and make your istighfar. Ask for Prophet forgiveness. At least to verify that you're not a hypocrite because Allah's punishment not on the, on the other belief. Allah is giving his, his testimony of punishing them like wood for a fire because they testify that they believe but they really don't believe. So then why are they there? The reason they're there is to work for shaitan to move people away from Rahman. And that's why the danger, that's why we describe that, what is Dajjal coming to do? When he knows that these people of Islam, these people of this belief, they have a power, they have an authority, they have a, a reality. I cannot take them on in a battle just like that because Allah is with them, Prophet is with them. So I have to come and disengage their belief so that what? Allah will be angered by them. It's not something small, you say, I can do it, I don't do it. I don't have to ask, you ask, you know, that's you and I and that and I'll believe something else. Dajjal wants to take the person out of belief into the qadab and the anger of Allah So we go now the reverse way. If you do not ask Prophet for forgiveness and you're not one directing yourself to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and saying that Allah has commanded me to be in your presence and asking your forgiveness. And please accept my forgiveness and don't let me to be from munafiqeen and live a life of hypocrisy. If you're not doing that then you're in a danger, so we'll give the, the reverse of the understanding. When you describe the munafiq then you say, how dangerous that is, how, how the, the verbiage is very angry from Allah because it's not taking when, when they teach the marifah that all oh, this creation is for Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah says, many times you come against me, no problem, but if you come against the Rasul, Allah's anger is now coming in, in a fierce vengeance upon that being. So Allah then describing in Surat al Munafiqeen, then live a life the reverse, that make sure you're continuously going to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and asking istighfar. He said, Ya Rasul Kareem, that's why we say Rasul Kareem. That you are the generous servant of Allah and you are the, the, the loving symbol of Allah and how much Allah is safeguarding 
that he knows the character of Prophet So the Ayatul Kareem, the next one Allah is saying, whether you forgive them and ask not for forgiveness of them, any one of them Allah will not forgive them. The crime that they have committed to come against Prophet even use the word of shirk against Sayyidina Muhammad Every type of deceit that they plot and they plan against the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Even Prophet becomes pitiful from the verse and has pity upon his nation. Forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. And Allah just says, you forgive them, you don't forgive them, I will not forgive them. These high crimes and misdemeanors are not forgivable by Allah It's not something small that you can believe what you want, I believe what I want. Allah says, no this is a crime that whether Prophet takes your case to ask your forgiveness, Allah making it so severe, I will not accept it. So it's not something small. When awliyaullah are coming and teaching in our life, Jauka wa nastafirullah wa nastafikum rasul, they run, live a life in which we are running to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad They are, you are my father and I'm your child. I'm not considering myself an adult, I'm not considering myself uh, of any, any authority or anything, I'm no one, I'm no one and I'm just coming to be under your jubba, under your khirqa, under the shade of your rahmah and that you take my case to Allah And that you, you present what I've done wrong and ask for forgiveness for your hisab and your account is immense in Allah's presence. That's the, their teaching is to safeguard us from this holy verse. So it's not something small, oh why the tariqahs teach to do this and the other ones they don't teach to do that and this is our tafaruq, this is our, our differences. No, they actually teach that to safeguard us from Allah's punishment. For if you don't do that and a shaitan is teaching you and a shaitan is dealing with you, he's taking your key away and entering and pushing you into an ocean of hypocrisy which Allah's qadab and anger is going to hit that servant. They came against my Prophet, they called this shirk, they start to say bad and they're angered by even the thought of asking Prophet for help, for madad, for support and, and that would then carry through to all his lovers. Why you go to these shaykhs? Uh, they are all the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah just ordered everybody to go to Prophet If you want to reach to Prophet then go to the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad They are the walking hadith of Prophet where Prophet described, you'll be with whom you love. They have so much love for Sayyidina Muhammad the minute they call or they don't call upon him, the ruhaniyat and the light of Prophet is present. And imagine if you meditate and contemplate and the light of Prophet comes, do you ever go back to being normal? The light of Sayyidina Muhammad as soon as that light becomes present, shahidan, mubashiran wa nadhiran means that that light came and took from your atoms and placed it into its being and under its being it's shahidan because light diffuses, it's not physical, we're talking about timeless reality. In a world of light as soon as we have an association of light and the majlis of Sayyidina Nabi always the ruhaniyat of Prophet is present in the association. When that light comes, imagine just for us to understand Everyone has maybe nice white lights. All of a sudden a majestic, beautiful green light comes. What happens in that green light? It diffuses everything. It goes into all the white lights. Doing what? When it goes into their light, it's grabbing them and bringing it back into its light to intercede for them. For one atom of you is as if all of you. All Prophet needs to take one atom of you 
and put the nazar on that light, put the mubashiran, put every light and blessings and tajallis. He said the tajalli of Rajab doesn't come to us. Allah opens everything to the reality in the soul of Prophet So we don't have to wait for this tajalli to hit us way out, wait until it comes. But if you're in the heart of Prophet the minute Prophet is receiving from Allah He's dressing his heart. He's dressing that, you, you be with whom you love, you love me, you be with me, you be in my heart. Not only in my entire wujud, you be in my heart. The minute Allah look to my heart, put a tajalli, He sees you there. Because Allah looks to the heart of Prophet Say, so how come He's in that heart? So it's because He loves me more than He loves Himself. He did everything to show that love, to, to be with that love. Every day they struggle for that love. Of course Sayyidina Muhammad loves them all and when Allah looks He's happy, they love you and I love them because they love you and you love them. And every tajalli and blessing and rahmah comes upon them. And this is the way, this is the, the fastest most powerful way to the Divinely Presence. Then Allah giving, be careful when these dajjals come and these shayateen come their only purpose is to pull the key of belief out. So the person thinks that they have direct access to Allah And Allah in Surah Al-Munafiqeen is, be careful, O oh, you companions of the heart and the lovers of this reality, shaitan will be fiercely against you. And every step of the way he's moving and coming at you and awliyaullah come because they know the game, they're mahfuz, they're guarded by Allah they see what he's doing and they see that he's coming for their belief. He's coming to was was and whisper to them, shirk, this is shirk, this is shirk. And Allah giving in Holy Qur'an in this holy month, the month of Rajab, the month of lights and blessings, said, no you better live a life in which you are continuously asking istighfar from Sayyidina Muhammad and that you're running into that presence, begging Prophet take my case, keep your nazar upon me, put your, your holy foot upon me, stamp me with your foot, stamp your foot on my head, don't let me to move under this authority and kingdom of shaitan that I want to be under your sultanat, under your nazar, under your muhabbat and your love. And all of that is then the immensity of these blessings because Allah gives us in Rajab this immense warning because it's going to be completed by the end of this journey. We end up on the 12th month of Hajj in Surat Al-Kawthar because you're entering into the heart of Prophet So you're journeying into this light, into these realities. This is the source of where Qur'an is emanating. At the seventh and most powerful month Allah warning that when you're going don't listen to shaitan try to distract you from this maqam. Your life is about always being in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad It's the source of every emanation and every blessing. That's this, this, the, the location of Holy Qur'an's emanations. By the twelfth month, the twelve times nine we're at Surat Al-Kawthar. That the Hajj for Arifin is to be at the fountain, the fountain of every reality, every knowledge, everything coming into existence is flowing through the Kawthar which is in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad We pray that Allah dress us and bless us and that the people who are asking these questions that you have to understand that these are, these are questions that you ask but more dangerous is why are you asking that? Ask any question you want, not a problem. We are a people who, who try not to insult anyone and try to be of service to everyone. But the overwhelming danger is know that shaitan is, is moving and the shayateen are, are everywhere. And if they begin to touch you, 
the sign of their touch is your madness and your mental capacity is leaving. And they hit and they hit and they hit and the person begins to lose their faith, lose their mentality, lose every, every sense of logic and reality and every sense of love into this Divinely light, into Divinely presence and shaitan make it appear as if they became clever. Oh, you just now became clever and thought of all these new things and that, that this is inspiration from Allah and Allah want me to, to worship Him alone. See, yeah, everything is worship of Allah but Allah is giving in Suratul Munafiqeen that you live a life of running to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad, don't be like Munafiqeen. Don't be like those whom angered Allah and said their being is like a wood just to be burned because the badness of the character, the badness of how they think is not something accepted by Allah So then the tariqs come and they safeguard us from that by making everything about joke that run, you're an oppressor to yourself. First thing to admit is that you are an oppressor. And you have done things wrong and what shaitan comes to, to fool people that why you have to ask for forgiveness, you've done nothing wrong. And before you know it you're already in difficulty, so awliyaullah come into our life, no, no, the whole beginning of the day keep asking istighfar for all the things you know you've done wrong and the things that you didn't know you've done, you've done wrong and the things you're about to do wrong. And then when I've finished asking all those istighfars, I continue my istighfar for what my children are doing wrong, what my family are doing wrong, what my community are doing wrong. Ya Rabbi astaghfirullah al-azeem wa atubu ilayk, astaghfirullah al-azeem wa atubu ilayk bi sifat al azim that your might and your majesty has no comprehension, the vastness of your power, the, 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 the minuteness of my existence. Ya Rabbi by that vastness of power wash away everything I have done wrong. And every day this is their shower, Astaghfirullah al-Azeem wa Atubu Alaykh, Astaghfirullah al-Azeem wa Atubu Alaykh, Astaghfirullah al-Azeem wa Atubu Alaykh. And then Allah's answer to that servant every time they make istighfar is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. In my name and reality that may you know or you don't know under Sifat al-Rahman I will wash you, under Sifat al-Raheem I will wash you. Means I'll clean you in dunya and I'll clean you in akhirah and I'll place you in the reality of what Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem stands for. Every time we ask istighfar, every time Allah's jawab and answers Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So as an immense cleansing, when they're making istighfar Allah is dressing them, dressing them, dressing them. And the, the middle of the day when they spent their whole day making istighfar at the beginning, towards the middle of the day they begin then to make their salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad You have to shower before you, you praise upon that reality. The shower of the believer is istighfar. When they make their istighfar, continuously making istighfar, by the end of the middle of the day they ask, Ya Rabbi now we want to be sweetened by the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad wa Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. And they keep then making their salawats and durood al-sharif and reciting different salawats to be fragranced and beautified by the light and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad which has no time and no limitation in our understanding. We said this, this world of, of people they live a time reality and everything is based on their mulk, their dunya, their, their material understanding. If we enter a timeless reality what does that mean that Prophet will come and, and make salawat upon us? And that if you are making continuous salawats in that day, imagine that your, your tasbih, you're all from afternoon on, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. What does that mean that the light of Prophet now is with you, accompanying you, dressing you, blessing you? Because Prophet said, you be with whom you love, that this is a sign of love and that light then attaches itself with that servant 
and begin to dress them. And that's why shahidan. My light is witnessing you. Of course I'm shahidan from what Allah gave to me, I'm witnessing with you, I'm companion with you. Mubashiran that every tajalli that coming to me I'm dressing you to the capacity that you have. I can't give you more qashi, you'll be dead. Everyone to their capacity of how much they can contain from the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And then they're receiving, receiving until they become mubashiran, they become glowing lights. Like ornaments filled with life that angels are astonished because angels don't receive those maqams. Angels are of a stagnant reality, what Allah created them they stay, they don't have an ascension. They're astonished at the believer how one moment they're down, next moment they're at lights that are astonishing because of they figured out who to be loving. When they were into their own deeds and their own action thinking they're going to lift themselves and they can't lift their pants, more or less lift themselves off the ground. When they finally realized, no you, it's not you lifting yourself, it's, it's who do you love? The one you love is the one who will be raising you because that one who is Sayyidina Muhammad soul is in a continuous mirage, lightning speed beyond imagination. As soon as you attach your salawat and your love onto that light, that light grabs you and shoots you into the heavens, dresses you and bless your soul with ornaments and lights that the angels are astonished by that. When nadiran that he began to give you a shara, don't, don't do, don't do these things, do, do good things. If you want me to be with you, stick with the good, stick with the good. And that's why then the tariqah comes to teach manners. The teacher, the, ta the tariqah comes to teach manners with all these lights and all these realities, that's why they're teaching manners and anyone whom is having difficulties and, and energies and and things that are not meeting in place, they have to review their own case. You have to review your own case. Why are things coming short? Why is, is rizq not coming? For tariqah the, the biggest understanding is when rizq is cut and rizq is in difficulty, something's wrong with the character and Sayyidina Muhammad is not happy. So everything in the hisab of the person has to go step by step, step by step. What am I doing? He's not happy with. He's not happy with any type of deceitful action where you conduct yourself in an in a inappropriate way with people, unknown. You think the, the rest of the world doesn't know what you're doing? They don't have to know. All that has to know is Sayyidina Muhammad he knows. If he's upset by the character, these are, these are people who are lovers. This is an immense rahmah because they don't want to punish in akhirah. So the punishment of dunya for these ahbab, these lovers is if Prophet is not happy, they get a sharat into their heart, not happy. They get a dream come to their life, not happy. If the rizq begin to be in difficulty, something is wrong with what they're doing. And Prophet wants it fixed, wants that bad action, bad character, the way the person is conducting themselves, known and unknown to people must be changed. Because these are all like a hospital, when you go in with some sort of difficulty immediately the doctor knows, you don't know, the doctor knows. They look at you one second and say, look at you're gonna have a heart attack just by the color of your lips. And you think nobody knew. You don't think the doctor know their whole life was to train like that, what about then spiritual doctors? But because the adab of the shaykhs they stay quiet and they can't reply to people and they can't talk with people. But the signs are for those who follow signs and look into the signs, they want you to meditate. So when somebody says, you know I have this difficulty, my money is not coming, rizq not coming, job is not opening, sickness not going away, they send you the email back, meditate. And they come back and go, oh, you keep sending email that says meditate, are you not reading these emails? I say, yeah they're reading the email but did you want somebody to give you a direct answer? And they have a, an understanding is you never approach the horse from the mouth 
and from the rear. Right? Why? Because he's going to bite you. If you go from his mouth and try to say, hi, I'm coming in, I'm going to ride you. you come to his mouth, <laughs> he'll bite you in one second. If you say, I'm going to go from the back and jump onto you and then ride you, he's going to take those two feet and give you a concussion and hit you in the head. So this is… the ego of people is much more dangerous than that example. There's no way to deal with the ego of people that they attack you back, they, they become uh, very angry. Tariqa comes with the subtlety of teaching that when you're claiming things are in difficulty, the rizq is not opening, the sustenance is in, in this, a sickness is coming with this, this is a school of tafakkur. They're teaching how to love Sayyidina Muhammad and then meditate, connect your heart, take your muhasaba. If you're not meditating maybe that's your own understanding, you don't want to know what you're doing. And they want you to sit at night and, and contemplate, why are things opening for me? And they said, you really want to know? We're going to start pushing into your heart for you to understand what you're doing. Don't do that anymore, stop all of these actions that you're doing and you begin to start to clean. That's nadira, that's from Prophet We said from the, the beginning of Surat Al-Kahf, they, they, they control your boat, they'll bring it up and take it down, bring it up and take it down so that they can control the khuluq and the character. Because when the servant is, is reaching to ikhlas and, and wants to reach to ikhlas, but they're not able to control the characteristics that they're exhibiting, then that's why then these imtihans are coming. They sit and meditate, what's going on? What are you doing wrong that these things are coming short? When they sit and they begin to meditate then they begin to write, I'm doing this wrong, I'm doing this wrong, I'm doing these things wrong. As soon as you identify these things that you're doing wrong, you make your istighfar and begin to change them. I'm not going to do the wrong, I'm going to do the right. And that's why then the people of meditation and tafakkur they contemplate everything. Everything that's sent to them as an understanding, it's not to be wasted. Every ishara that coming into their heart, pay attention to it. It has a, a immense, immense reality that people are distracted by their dunya and the dunya at the same time is collapsing. That build your akhirah, build your connection with Sayyidina Muhammad to have noble works and noble characteristics, time is finishing. That Prophet want to sign on their reality to grant them from what Allah want to grant them. And that requires that their khuluq and their character to be of a noble characteristic inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.